and just stroke each other's egos and say, hey, that person spoke so eloquently and go home and expect everything to remain the same. No, we are all here to reimagine the taxi industry, to lay a firm and solid foundation, to put the building blocks in place for the taxi industry of the future. Today, yes, we are launching the public discourse platform for the National Taxi Lukhotla, we are directed and aimed at specific objectives of what we want to talk about. We will be unpacking unity and leadership. We'll talk formalization. We'll talk professionalism in the industry. We will also discuss issues of regulation, law enforcement being key among them, as well as empowerment, and uh, of course, that much anticipated subsidy uh, from government. And so these talks will not just begin and end today. They will be spread throughout the length and breadth of the country, in the provinces, via Twitter, via Facebook, and all manner of social media platforms. We will be having webinars. We want everybody to be involved. We will all make sure that our voices are heard because in these discussions, they will all culminate in that national lechotla, and that's where concrete steps and resolutions will be made. Decisions will be taken that will lead us up until April when uh, Minister Mbalula has envisaged that we will then see that subsidy going to the taxi industry. So we are incredibly excited about this. This is a, the culmination of a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and many sleepless nights. Minister Balula having countless discussions with all manner of stakeholders who are also represented here today. And so we are looking forward to what promises to be fruitful engagements. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to call upon our Deputy Minister now to give us a firm background and overview of how we got to where we are today. Mayor Magadzi, Malibongwe Ika. Thank you so much. Round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. Malibongwe. Thank you very much. Program Director. Ayanda Ali Payne, the Honorable Minister of Transport in the Republic of South Africa, Minister Fikile Mbalula, the Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Transport, Honorable Msevenzi Zwani, MEC Mamabulo, the President of Salga, uh, Mengadi Meng, Honorable Mayors and Councillors who are here, officials from the Department of Transport led by the Director General, Mr. Muemi, CEOs and officials of entities operating in the Department of Transport, uh, not to Secretary General Edward Tobejani, the President of uh, FEDUSA, Mr. Silmazila, uh, NETLEG representatives who are here, Captains of industry, uh, I've seen Mr. Taibosh, Mr. Mazitsa, if he's here, I haven't seen him. Uh, all protocol observed, and in particular, the media houses who are here, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. The history of the process that we are engaged in today uh, in bringing the lasting and sustainable improvement to the taxi industry demands of us uh, to always be mindful of the foundations laid by our forebears in this regard and acknowledge that there has been delays, mistakes which were happening along the way as we're playing towards finding ourselves where we are today. We are thus building on these foundations that were laid by our forebears and uh, mindful of the fact that the President of the Republic has always said to us that we should kaulesa in everything that we are doing and demand that uh, we should accelerate change. We must accelerate a transformation and make sure that we continue uh, with the dictates as enshrined in the Constitution. Uh, we continue with the dictates as enshrined in our, our electoral manifesto. And we continue with what we said to ourselves uh, when the founding father of the democracy, Tata Mandala, said, we need to aspire for a better life for all. The perspective we are being asked to adopt today 
uh, across the different spheres of government is that, uh, is, is that which extols the role uh, of public transport as an enabler, but both of satisfaction uh, of commuters' needs, satisfaction in terms of how we can be able to drive and develop the society and transform the economy as we broaden the participation towards inclusive economic growth. Chairperson and program director, minister, the intergovernmental relations uh, concept compels us to work uh, together, but the district model uh, is what we are experiencing here today and implementing to make sure and to, to, to further test, testify that the, it's, it is critical to work together uh, uh, in cooperating and making sure that all spheres of government are working in an integrated manner. Speaking of the topic at hand, I must begin by stating that the matter to do with the development of the industry have been captured uh, in some research, including research by the Department of Transport. Various researchers have attempted to state the nature and ch uh, uh, of changes that characterize and de uh, the development of the taxi industry in South Africa, focusing largely on the minibus taxi uh, industry, and have in, in so doing uh, attempted to pin down the nature of the challenges affecting this industry. Most of the recognized, uh, most, of, most of us have recognized the commitment uh, uh, by the stakeholders in trying to build this industry. And it is more suitable now than ever before to broaden the public transport needs. In one such study, uh, Schellenkamp and Klopp uh, commit, uh, committed, uh, said the commitment that they are making uh, was very apparent. And they, they indicated that, and I quote, since 1994, the minibus taxi reform had consistently been uh, on government's uh, transport agenda, unquote. The commitment uh, was more clearly uh, expressed with the formation of the NTTT uh, in 1995, which its intention uh, included uh, investigation uh, issues affecting the minibus taxis sector and proposed uh, the solution and the policy options for sustainable uh, sustainability of this sector. It is important to state and to note some of the studies uh, in, of the, in this sector had already picked up negative development in the industry and was revealed uh, in a study by the International Labor Organization. According to the ILO, it is apparent that in 1990 in South Africa, the industry largely uh, informal had already was, uh, was already showing signs of saturation. In some areas, and uh, it sparked uh, intense uh, disputes and battles between the associations of the, and the owners of the, the, the industry, and this actually was one of the causes of concerns, hence the NTTT. It is for this very reason uh, that, amongst others, the NTTT proposed a formulation of the national structure to bring unity within the industry and through unity uh, to quell the violence and establish a structure that would be the voice of the industry. The NTTT had opposed, uh, had proposed to the industry uh, that we should build a, a, this industry into a modern formalized industry. What is more pro profound about the NTTT and the study by uh, Shellen, Camp and Klopp is that uh, it concluded by saying it is important that this industry be subsidized so that it can be able to contribute more effectively to the taxi industry market. And as such, the support by government is more 
more, more eminent. I would like to also indicate that the white paper on uh, 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 transport indicated that the minibus taxi operators uh, uh, be supported by government in a form of uh, uh, making sure that they are a collective, either uh, cooperatives, associations, or companies. And that the, the white paper also said that provinces uh, must introduce uh, the minibus taxi routes uh, and networks. The, the, the white paper also went on to indicate that the minibus operators should uh, on their own or in partnership with other companies complete the contract issued by the Department of Transport. Program Director, as I move towards conclusion, I need to indicate that there were several other issues that we have been able to look into as we were dealing with the challenges that our, uh, uh, the Minibus Taxi Association find themselves in. Uh, one of the things that we have uh, uh, spoken to was we need to in the, in introduce, as part of uh, uh, developing the industry, a fairless, a cashless fair collection. We need to introduce the ability uh, to contract with government by the, uh, the taxi industry, the ability to form limited numbers of contracts instead of multiple uh, contracts by individuals, in so saying, either through a co cooperative, either through a, a, a business unit or association. Reduce the burden of regulatory control, uh, the ability to award the network or routes uh, to uh, the industry and impose required uh, set, uh, 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 certain levels of services as required by government uh, uh, at all levels. The tax recapitalization uh, was approved and uh, having been approved, uh, it is an indication that this industry pushed uh, uh, for the past eight years close to 7.7 billion uh, in making sure that we scrap the taxes that are not needed. And I would like to say, uh, as, I, uh, uh, as I move uh, towards the end of my speech, that it is important that we formalize the taxi industry. It is important that the taxi industry comply with the regulations, with the legislations uh, that are there. It is important that as we promote and formalize the industry, empowerment of the taxi industry can, can, should be something that we work towards uh, uh, making sure that it is here and it must live. The legislations that have been in parliament, some of them, the National Land Transport Act, has uh, to a particular extent, when amended, uh, ignored some of the issues that were there in the Transitional Act. And I think these are the things that we should be able to look into as we are working towards formalizing uh, the taxi industry. Uh, in conclusion, Chairperson, we are here today and I would like to say to the minister, it's been a long journey, a journey which was full of mountains and like Tata Mandala indicated, as I climb the mountain and I go uh, down, I can see very uh, many mountains and valleys and I think now here today, we should be able to clap hands to the Minister of Transport that he, was to, he, he is talking about the things that we are going to be realizing uh, in formalizing the taxi industry, in making sure that there is subsidy for the taxi industry, and most important of all, in making sure that this industry, down the valley chain, they can be able to sustain themselves. Let's clap hands for the Minister of Transport in the Republic. I thank you. Please, let's also clap hands for the Deputy Minister in the Republic.
you so much. I've already forgotten the COVID protocols and we are not out of the woods just yet. President said we must not throw caution to the wind. We must continue to be responsible. Deputy Minister, thank you very much for that. Ladies and gentlemen, I think what we've gleaned from what the uh, Deputy Minister has had to say is that context is very much key. It's very important for us to look at things in its full context, otherwise we get an incomplete picture. I think it's important for us to note that this administration is not here to criticize the work of its predecessors, but rather to complete it, to pick up the baton from the progress where they left off and to continue to run and make greater strides. And it's important for us to do so. And uh, speaking of greater strides, let's get a scene setter now to find out exactly how great those leaps are that we're going to take, where we are at the moment, and where we're headed. Allow me to call upon our Director General, Mr. Alec Mwemi, to come and address us, please. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, uh, Honorable Minister, Deputy Minister, the MEC, the Chair of the Portfolio Committee of Transport, the President of SALGA, and the President of Santaco, and all Honorable Dignitaries uh, that are here today. I have been asked to set the scene for purposes of the discourse and the endeavor that will follow in this regard. And this Lekhutla for Texas that we're having has to be groundbreaking in nature. And therefore, I would wish to take uh, the audience on a journey and a bit of a memory lane. And I will, forgive me, I will compress it uh, very much because we have to be mindful of time and also of the importance that uh, there are many speakers on the program. Now, Piet van der Merve is a bus driver. He works for the South African Transport Services under the Department van Ferfur. And uh, at the same time, he has a dilemma that uh, the townships have just been set up and people have got to be taken from the dormitory towns and to be moved from where they stay and to come into the urban centers and the economic centers of the country, which are CBDs and the towns as we know them. The new laws are coming and they are coming thick and fast. And at the time, it is not possible for blacks and whites to actually meet. With that in mind, new policies are required to be responsive to this new challenge of how do we move the laborers and how do we get people to move in a vast country such as ours. In 1930, this is the scene of the time. And the apartheid government response with the Motor Carrier Transport Act. And that act creates overnight a monopoly of transport services only owned by the state. The act specifically prohibits transportation of goods and passengers by road for profit. So you could give people a lift, yes, but you could not make them pay. And you could carry goods for a friend from the hinterlands to the urban centers and bring them an old bed or whatever, but you couldn't charge them to bring the goods into those areas. And therefore, the South African transport monopoly was held by the company Piet van der Merwe works for, the South African Transport Services, and which was the forerunner to what was later to become the modern day Transnet. 
as a consequence and to where we are today, more challenges emerged out of this uh, specific challenge. And the biggest catalyst that made changes and that needed a clear review of this monopoly type of industry, because back then, a principle of self-sufficiency was undertaken by government. The idea really was that government across all modes of transportation will provide transport for both goods as well as people. But as we know, the system didn't hold up very, very well. And as we do know, the services that were determined for black people were quite erratic and services were quite unreliable they were unpredictable, they were less subsidized, and it created a huge challenge. By 1976, the riots had come in Soweto and all other related areas in other townships as well, the Cape Flats in Butsabelo, everywhere else. And after the 1976 thing and the riots were there, quickly the boycotts for buses followed. And with the bus boycotts, the apartheid government could no longer ignore the challenge that was there. By 1977, they appointed a presidential commission of inquiry to look into the transport industry. And that was called the Van Breda Commission of Inquiry. It recommended more competition, and it recommended that there should be less regulation of the industry. But this still were quite half half hearted measures, and they knew would be players were never going to be competitive. They were facing a huge challenge of uh, the apartheid uh, machine in terms of subsidization of its own transportation services. By 1987, a white paper was written on transport policy, and it was tabled. And by 1988, the Transport Deregulation Act of 1988 was passed. With it, it became a free-for-all overnight, with the deregulation and allowing people now to do so, have allowed what we have seen up until 1996, with the emergence of taxi organizations and the first national taxi body, SAPTA, the South African Black Taxi Association, emerging to be a major player and the first use of the minibus taxi as we know it today began to be a reality on our roads. And that still, many of the taxi people were never licensed at the time. And as you may know, very soon other bodies emerged other than SAPTA. There was FELTA, there was SALTA, there was all of them. And at the last count, there were 13 of this type of bodies. But of course, the major ones were the seven that ultimately matched. But this was not sustainable in the way it was by 1995. The new democratic government has just been a year old and has taken over, cognizant of the quagmire that we were facing and the death of thousands of people on the roads and the shootings and the so-called the taxi wars. Basically, this body is largely, and I'm sorry, Tate Bosch was one of the leaders of this bodies but they operated more like the mafia and they fought each other for routes and they fought each other for taxing, ranking facilities. And if they couldn't get their way, the barrel of the gun was the major form of communication at the time. The democratic government by 1995 appointed a taxi, national taxi task team, which was chaired by then uh, Limpopo MEC for transport, the late Farsani, and it had experts uh, in this regard. Oh, oh, sorry, he's still alive. Hey. hey. Uh, uh, apologies to him. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, I, I will send him special apologies. Uh, uh, and he chaired the task team. And that task team did its work. And by 1996, it made uh, serious recommendations. Their 1996 report was approved by then Minister Dola Omar. Indeed, he's the one who's late, yes. And uh, subsequent to that, 
it was approved by cabinet and accepted. Among the key re re recommendation was that the transport sector must be re-regulated. And with that re-regulation thing, also it said that all the war infections and the bodies that were there needed to be dealt away with and we should have a single industry regulatory body for the entire taxi industry. Irrespective of whether you utilize a midi bus taxi, irrespective of whether you utilize a sedan or whatever you were to be regulated and represented by this one industry body. So from there, as we know, a number of those recommendations have been implemented. And in pursuit of the implementation of some of the many recommendations that were there, a body called Sataco then emerged as a merger of the various of the bodies together. It was not easy to get all of them to agree to fall into one body. And there were still others who were unhappy with that, and which culminated into the 2001 conference in Durban, which brought in what we know today as Santaco, the South African National Taxi Association. Santaco had always been envisaged to be an overarching body, a council, that will look at all facets of this. Therefore, there were those recommendations that were never implemented fully. Let me give just one example of the many that are there. One of them was on the fact of safety. With statistics of the day in 2005 showing that 46% of all accidents happening on our roads involved minibus taxis, and so many people were dying as a result of this, Safety measures had to be put into place and considerations had to be uh, adjusted in that regard. And therefore, the government decided that one of the things we needed to do, and which is what the recommendation of the task team of 1996 has decided, was that have a specific vehicle that is owned and the copyright is owned by government that will have serious uh, security features and safety features that will have doors opening on both sides of the vehicle, that will have twin uh, wheels at the back, that will have reinforced chases, that will have a whole host uh, of other measures, including safety belts for each and every one of the passengers, that will have all windows as emergency exits. And all of this were written and the specifications were done. But however, under pressure from the manufacturers of vehicles in South Africa, and as you may see, I want, uh, you can look around and see the dominant uh, force. Uh, I won't mention names, I don't want government to be sued. But you can tell for yourself, the reality is that uh, with the harsh lobbying and behind the scene work, half-hearted measures were accepted to convert what essentially was designed as a family vehicle uh, to transport you to a holiday as a family into a vehicle that is a passenger carrying commute vehicle. And uh, half-hearted measures were put in, the chases were never reinforced, the back wheels were never doubled. As you may see, some of them came, yes, with uh, some seat belts. Some of them are not as functional as they're supposed to be, but that was the case as we had. So some measures were done. Some of the things were implemented. But the key thing was issue of formalization. Uh, the industry bodies argue this matter that we have been formalized. And we say yes, but if we look at what formalization had to take us to, we have done half-hearted measures. We are not fully where we should have been. This is by no mistake, the mistake of the industry. Government has had to make a self-introspection, look at itself, and say we should have taken this to its logical conclusion. And as the program director, my colleague Ayanda points out, it's not the job of our current administration to blame previous governments. It's to build on what they have done and to take the conclusion to their logical thing. 
Therefore, the endeavor for us, Honorable Minister, Deputy Minister, represents an opportunity for us to do three things. First, to look back and take stock of where we come from, but also importantly today, to assess where we are, we are and how is the industry looking, what is happening now, who is the biggest beneficiary, to evaluate the entire value chain, and why is it that the operator is not the biggest benefit. And also the commuters are also not benefiting from such a, uh, an erratic service uh, that we see. And therefore we also need to take stock of the 1996 uh, milestone and to say how far have we gone in the implementation process and the recommendation thereto. Are they still valid? Can we implement them? What are the impediments and what are the challenges? But most importantly and thirdly, we need to plot and chart a way forward and a course for the future that is solid, that is hinged on the key issues of us reimagining the future of a world-class taxi industry in South Africa. Minister, we look to the day when we see the conductor saying to the passengers, uh, will you have beef or chicken? And if we arrive there, then we know we have a world-class service in our country. And therefore, the Indaba should discuss all issues, no holds barred, no holy cows, and all the key matters, unity, governance, subsidization, profitability, sustainability of the industry, passenger facilities, passenger services and professionalism, safety, compliance, and the regulatory environment, issues of code of conduct for drivers, for operators, training, operating conditions, and all of the issues that are necessary, and government too must make good on subsidization issue, which is the key matter. And to that we say, we look future to the deliberations without any hindrances and without uh, any things. And the minister will surely articulate the matters that the taxi lukhutla will need to deal with in detail. And that's what our job needs to do and where we come from. And that is the scene of today. Thank you. Thank you very much. May we please get another round of applause for our Director General, ladies and gentlemen. You know, just listening to him, I couldn't help but think, hey, on scorn fun fair. We have come such a long way, ladies and gentlemen, but we still have much further to go. And I think it's important for us to stop, to reflect, and to look back at where we come from, where we are, and where we're going. But we dare not linger in the phase of reflection, lest we lose momentum. We need to eventually roll up our sleeves and work. We're under no illusion, ladies and gentlemen, that the work that lies ahead of us is mammoth. This is a big task uh, on our shoulders. And we, as a government, have uh, taken solace in the fact that we are not alone. We take courage in the fact of knowing that uh, there is a solid social compact at work. It has been said that if you want to go fast, you travel alone. But if you want to go far, you need to travel with a companion. And so today we would like to give thanks to those who have been our companions in this journey, our stakeholders who have made sure that we do not work in silos. They are here with us and we enjoy support from a wide range of stakeholders uh, within this uh, sector of uh, transportation, public transport and the taxi industry in particular. We're going to hear from them now, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to give us a message of support. It will not be longer than five minutes minutes, just words of encouragement, what they hope to see as we launch uh, this uh, Taxi Lukhotla public discourse platform. So first and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to call uh, upon uh, the Treasurer General of the BBC, uh, Bunolo Ramachele. Uh, Ramachele will join us uh, representing business. Thank you very much.
Am I audible? Perfect. Um, uh, to, I want to just acknowledge uh, the Minister of Transport, um, Figile Mbalula, uh, the Deputy uh, Minister, Dikele Di Magazi, the MEC of Transport and Roads in the province of Gauteng, Jacob Mamabolo, as well as the chairperson of um, the Portfolio Committee of Transport in Parliament, M. Zizwan, and the President of Salga, as well as the President of Santaco, uh, Philip Daibos. Um, as I was going through the program, I noticed that the Minister, um, the, the Portfolio Committee Chair, and Mr. Daibos are all from Free State. I think in future, just to save costs, we can have this gathering in Bloemfontein. Uh, <laughs> Um, the, the Black Business Council, as the overarching uh, mother body um, and confederation of black business in South Africa, um, we've been asked as to what interest do we have in the taxi industry? Um, and our answer is very simple. We've got an interest wherever black businesses um, are operating and ensuring that um, they get the most equitable uh, participation in any economic activity in the country. And it also happens that Santaco is an affiliate of the Black Business Council. Um, we are here to pledge support uh, to this initiative, and it's quite a momentous and historic um, uh, initiative. And we are very much happy that we had a meeting with the minister in April, and one of the things that in the reactions that were happening, um, he, he kept on mentioning to say that and Indaba is coming, and Indaba is coming. And I think he even said September. Uh, so I think he has beat his deadline by even over a month to actually have this particular engagement. So we are very much uh, happy that uh, he takes black business serious, and the department is taking the issue of black business people uh, serious and putting it at the top of the agenda. I will not go into the details of uh, you know, the, 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 the ecosystem of uh, and the history of the taxi industry. I think the DG has done an eloquent and, and fantastic job at that. But uh, to, we just want to articulate some of the issues that we would like to see coming up strongly when it comes to the Indaba and whatever outcomes come out of that particular engagement. And at the core of it is economic freedom and economic empowerment. Because we look at the taxi industry and we proudly say that it is a black-owned industry, but when we go and drill down deeper and see who exactly benefits from this industry, and it's not us, it's people who are not sitting here. And I'm looking at the audience and I'm seeing that none of the beneficiaries of the industry are sitting here, but uh, we are the ones that do the bidding um, as black people. Um, we have looked at um, what the government has spent over the past uh, few years when it comes to the recapitalization program. It's almost five billion rands that has been put into the kitty, and a majority of that money has actually found its way to people who don't look like us. Um, because a certain percentage of the money, I think it's about 120,000 rands or so, goes to a deposit of a vehicle, and that deposit of that vehicle goes to a certain company that I will not mention uh, by name, albeit that I be sued, or the BBC gets into some litigation issues. So these deposits are put into place, and um, the taxi that is uh, borrowing this money to borrow to buy a taxi ends up paying in certain instances as far as 27% uh, uh, for a vehicle. I think those are rates that were reserved for us when we're buying bedroom suits and, uh, and, and all sorts of weird and wonderful furniture and fittings uh, when we were growing up, not for a vehicle that is meant to, to, to be a business. So we need to look, Minister, urgently at the issue of the financing and who exactly benefits, because even these very same entities that are benefiting are underpinned and under, uh, underwritten by the Public Investment Corporation at the end of the day. So it's pensioners' money that is being utilized to keep the very same industry operators 
uh, at, at, at in, in slavery mode. So I'm not going to go again into the details, but um, I just wanted to pledge uh, support on behalf of the Black Business Council. And um, we look at the entire value chain as this uh, Indaba sits to ensure that uh, black people are the real beneficiaries of this industry. And we're not just uh, mercantile capitalists that just get by with the bare minimum. Thank you. applause please ladies and gentlemen you know I'm reminded by uh, one of my favorite sayings or about one of my favorite sayings that just hearing from the the president uh, or the treasurer general at least of the BBC it says nothing for us without us nothing for us without us it says anything that you do for me without me you do against me. So it's important that those who participate in the taxi industry are not just consumers of uh, the vehicles or the services, but indeed that they benefit from the value chain. So thank you very much for that. Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time, I'm just going to try and see if we can speed things up a little bit. Let us now call upon the president of FEDUSA, uh, Mr. Godfrey Silematzela, just to represent Labour on our behalf. I'm also just going to say that we will not be having a represented uh, from uh, NACTU, and that is because the Deputy General Secretary, Mr. Edward Tobajani, has a bereavement to attend to. So he asked uh, that we just uh, highlight the fact that he would have loved to be here, but he's unable to attend. But we welcome and we appreciate the contribution uh, from FEDUSA, uh, Mr. Silemazela, if you may take to the stage, please, sir. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> the Honorable Minister of Transport of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Fikile Mbalula, the Deputy Minister of Transport, Ms. Dikele Dimagazi, President of Salka, Mr. Binga Dimeni, the President of Santaco, Mr. Tai Bosch, Chairperson of the Parliamentary Committee of Transport, Mr. Msebe Zizwani, Houghton MEC for Transport, uh, Mr. Mamabolo, honorable guests, comrades and friends, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Amanda! Okay. Honorable Minister, it is indeed a great privilege for me to be afforded this opportunity on behalf of the federations of, on behalf of Federation of Union of South Africa, FEDUSA, to address participants in this August gathering who are united in their desire to finding a lasting solution to the myriad of challenges facing the tax industry. In view of vital socioeconomic role that it plays in our country, it would be most opportune at this juncture, honorable minister and guest, to, to pause for a moment and remind ourselves of both the immense economic contribution that this industry makes in our country, South Africa, as well as the transformation required holistically. So as we pause and give honor to the women of this great nation during Women's Month, we equally need to take introspect of the females that are equally engaged in this sector, albeit if only a mere handful that must be recognized and developed in this critical sector. If you look at Statistics South Africa's latest National Household Survey figures show that the taxes are still considered as one of the preferred modes of transport, moving 68% of the 5.4 million commuters to and from work on a daily basis. This notable contribution to our economy by the tax industry 
made of nearly 200,000 vehicles is estimated of more than 40 billion a year and employs 250,000 indirect and indirect job opportunities, which includes drivers, taxi marshals, and administrative support. The extended family system in our country on which millions more are dependent on the industry for survival and educating of their children. The importance of the industry can therefore not be overemphasized. It is for this reason, Honorable Minister, that as producer and organized labor, we are supportive of the Department of Transport's plans, plans to spend a projected 185.5 million over the medium term in rejuvenating and formalizing this vital sector of our economy. Not only that, minister and guests, but as producer, we see in the tax industry a rare opportunity to practically implement our guiding philosophy of decent work, which in simple terms means work with dignity, where the work is seen as endowed in invaluable human dignity, and respects the employer is sincerely respected by the employer in return. Decent work means that taxi drivers and all other category of workers in the industry, in the industry enjoy full access to statutory employment benefits, such as pensions and provident funds, medical aid for themselves and their families, formal work, contracts, paid leave, and freedom from both physical and emotional violence. Because at the end of the day, they are our compatriots, they are our spouses, and they are parents to their beloved children like all of us. Therefore, their world of work should be free from all forms of maladies. However, Honorable Minister, we would also like to use this opportunity to appeal to our brothers and sisters to start helping the government to consequently help the industry by starting to embrace their equal responsibility through active citizenry and contribution to their statutory tax obligation. This will allow government to be able to build resources that will be used in taking their beloved industry forward and make it a success story. But equally so, it would follow FEDUSA and labor as a collective to hold government accountable for extending protection to all sectors, both formal and informal, in the quest to move South Africa forward in the new recreated and invigorated villages of the future that presents opportunities in the form of a reliable and affordable transport for millions of commuters in our beloved country. Honorable Minister, this year we find ourselves and the rest of humanity in the middle of the deadly COVID-19 pandemic which has claimed millions of lives across the globe, devastated and ruined economics, and we cannot say with certainty when we will be able to see an end. It is also in this spirit that we humbly appeal to our compatriots in the taxi industry to reshape the debates of ensuring the protection of themselves as service providers, as well as the protection of those who utilizes the services so that in the, middle of the, in the middle of the pandemic, safety protocols can be upheld and government can provide the safety lending that does not compromise the livelihood of the tax industry and their members. As I conclude, Chairperson, <clears throat> last but not least, Honorable Minister, it is Women's Month we cannot stress enough the need for the industry to respect and honor their women folk. For without the empowerment and dignified treatment of women in the industry, 
this will not reach its exalted potential, something that none of us would like to see happening. Amanda! Thank you. A pertinent and a timely message. Another round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. President, much appreciated. Thank you very much. Let us hear from the Nedlack community constituency now, ladies and gentlemen. Please allow me to call upon Mr. Dibelo Khatebe, representing Nedlack. Thank you. Program Director, Honorable Minister and Deputy Minister, the Honorable Chairperson of the Transport Portfolio Committee, the MEC, the President of Santaco, the President of NTA, Distinguished leaders, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Program director, I represent the community constituency at Nedlek. We often say, program director, the community constituency at Nedlek, you know, we, we, we speak with, with cheek. We speak with chutzpah, we say. Everybody else that is sitting here or outside, when you knock off from home and you, we represent you, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you do. You are part of our community. So allow me to proceed to do so, even though we, we, we we don't have the right mechanisms to be able to consult you all the time so that we can speak for you. Honorable Minister, I can't help but uh, be struck by the irony of the choice of the location for this event today. And I identify this location as in being in Jamiston where in 1981, SAPTA was formed in Germiston, up some 25 kilometers from here in Katlehong. But not only that, broadly speaking, around transport, uh, we are not far from the uh, OR Tambo Airport, which was formerly called the Jan Smuts Airport, which, whose forerunner was the Paul Mietfontein Airport, which was in Germiston. I can go on and on, Minister. Uh, but then, of course, the irony of the fact that while SAPTA was formed in Germiston, it is here in Germiston where the taxis get to be destroyed, as we have seen a little earlier. Again, uh, Minister, this event takes place the month of August, and therefore we should salute all the women who have, and those who have, who continue to play a key role in transport matters. It is befitting too that we recall the preeminent journalist, Ruth First, who, in an article that he, she wrote in 1957, on the Alexandra bus boycott, she wrote that that boycott in 1957 showed that, I quote, in active campaigning for basic human and economic conditions, Africans united. It is through that, th that unity that holds the key to their success. In the same article, 
Honorable Minister. Ruth First linked that 13-year-old pass by court to the first ever discussions for a subsidy in, 1990, in 1944 under the leadership of your predecessor, a certain Mr. F.C. Starrock, who was the Minister of Transport then. In that, the, a commission of inquiry was set up at that time, and it identified the fact that black people in particular could not afford to pay the fares that they were charged in, in the transport services that were available. In fact, specifically speaking, um, they could not afford four pennies in 1994. It was a big issue. You increase four pennies for a trip from Alexandra to Johannesburg, you make it five pennies. No, we can't afford that. Uh, well, we talk of certain big numbers today. Fast forward to today again. Minister, we agree with the thrust of most of the 66 slide presentations that you presented at NEDLEC. Most especially the point that the discussion about subsidies has to be a discussion that is deliberately meant to benefit the commuters. Again, the people we, we represent, the commuters. And, and, and we'd like uh, it to be clear that subsidies are not supposed to make anyone else or taxi operators to become fat cats. They are meant or should be aimed at ensuring that the commuters can afford to use the services. In addition, we, just to name a few of some of the range of uh, matters that we agree with that are contained in the presentation you made at NEDLEC, uh, the concept of for instance, the public transport fund, we are totally in support of that. Issues of formalization, the concept of integrated public transport, and a range of others. Mr. Minister, we seek to reiterate our readiness as well as our availability to provide concrete interventions of our own we are not going to sit back and say, well, things will be done. We want to be part of contributing to solutions. In fact, we are in the process of contributing to what will become the government's economic recovery plan post COVID-19. To this end, Mr. Minister, we have joined forces with a dynamic entity of black youths to create an IT platform that will be compliant with various legislation, especially the National Land Transition Act, and even to take forward the idea of the all-mode smart card beyond the taxi industry. When we say beyond the taxi industry, we see the taxi industry as the flagship of the informal sector. And in line with recommendation 204 of the International Labor Organization, we are going to contribute in that economic recovery paper the idea of ensuring that we can raise the so-called informal sector into the formal sector, which is precisely what you are also doing. In conclusion, we re repeat we demand to be part of the solutions. As Ruth first observed, our unity holds the key to success. One of the Nedlec community constituency components that disabled peoples of South Africa also share the motto that the program director mentioned, nothing for us without us. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Another round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. I know, Mr. Khatebe, we are well represented. I'm to tell you, we are represented by fire, by force. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please now allow me to call upon Mr. Andile Nomlala. Uh, Mr. Nomlala will be speaking on behalf of the BMF. Is Mr. Nomlala here with us today? Colleagues, in the interest of time, I'm going to ask that we move on to the uh, next item. And then uh, when Mr. Nomlala joins us, we can then try and see how we can redeem the time and uh, slot him back in. But representing industry now, which is where we're going next, we're going to be hearing from our e-hailing service providers. And they have been kind enough to send us uh, their contribution uh, via text. This is where technology comes to the fore. I will be reading uh, messages of support from Bolt South Africa, from Tam Taxi Live Africa, as well as from Uber South Africa. So if you may indulge me for a second or two, please, as I open it. Thank you very much. So coming from Mr. Gareth Taylor, who's representing Bolt South Africa as uh, the country manager, he sends his salutations and he greets observing protocol and then says the following, Bolt South Africa congratulates the minister and the department on launching this public discourse initiative. We appreciate and we are thankful for the opportunity to participate in this endeavor as well as to be present today and to offer this message of support. We hope that this process will contribute to national transport policy and regulatory enhancements that will provide a blueprint for the future of efficient, of smart, innovative, and safe mobility in South Africa that enables inclusive socioeconomic growth and development. Therefore, we place a premium on engaging with the policy dialogue and substantive processes that this public discourse initiative will involve. We look forward to constructive and robust reciprocal engagement with government in this regard. We wish all stakeholders well in this endeavor and in our deliberations going forward. Thank you. And that message from Bolt, ladies and gentlemen, allow me now to open up uh, the message coming from Taxi Live Africa. And it reads as follows. It's uh, by the founder and CEO, by the way, Mr. Luvuyo Nchai. Ms. Nchai says, and I quote, as a proudly South African e-hailing service provider, we are honored to be invited to participate in the National Taxi Lhotla Public Discourse. We welcome and support the initiative by the Ministry of Transport, Honorable Minister Figel Mbalula, to the formalization and professionalization of the taxi industry. Taxi Live Africa has no doubt that this initiative will definitely liberate the taxi industry from many transport, social, financial, and economic challenges. Formalization of the taxi industry will regulate the e-hailing technology service providers which came into our country when both government and the taxi industry were not prepared for it. Taxi Live Africa is confident that the formalization will restore the dignity of the taxi industry and stop discordances between e-hailing minibus taxi meters as well as taxi operators that leads to murders. To conclude, Taxi Africa is committed to comply, assist government and the industry to always bring advanced technology solutions to the taxi industry. Ndiabulela Ma Africa. That message coming from Taxi Live from the founder and CEO. And then lastly, ladies and gentlemen, if you would allow me, let me read a message of support coming from Uber uh, by the uh, country manager, Nduguzo Nyanda. He says, and I quote, Honorable ministers, honorable DG, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for the opportunity to have Uber and the e-hailing industry join the conversation and be part of the dialogue today. We have great respect for each of you and the important role that you play in transporting the people of South Africa. Uber has always held the view that e-hailing technologies are just one part of South Africa's transport system, which is made up of many public transport models. The main purpose of e-hailing is to provide an alternative to private car ownership by means of moving people from point A to point B safely. 
reliably and affordably. For drivers, we aim to draw as much efficiency out of their vehicle as possible. Since our entry into the market, partnering with the taxi industry has always been an important part to us, as well as critical to our business strategy in South Africa. And while we remain fairly new in the industry, we believe that Uber has helped grow the industry by attracting more people to use shared or public transport services because of the efficiency, transparency, and safety features our technology offers them. The uh, country manager goes on to outline the devastating effects of COVID-19 and the various measures that Uber has put in place to try and mitigate those adverse effects. Please allow me to pick up just as he closes to say, I speak on behalf of Uber and no doubt others in the e-hailing industry when I say we are committed to working together to stabilize the transport sector in our country with greater goal of achieving a safe public transport system which benefits all South Africans. This is why we are indeed humbled to be included in these dialogues, and it is especially pleasing that the updated uh, uh, amendments to the regulations include e-hailing operators and drivers as legitimate participants in the country's public transport system. We are excited to engage further, and we hope to be able to provide insights into a solution that will serve all South Africans. We believe that e-hailing can play a critical role in serving our country, not only through this unprecedented time, but also for the future to come. So may we please give our e-hailing service providers a round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Staying with the industry, please now uh, give a round of applause to Mr. Opa Mahano, who is representing SAMTF, please. Is Mr. Mahano here with us today? I thank you, sir. And very quickly, just to contextualize, SAMTF speaking on behalf of the meter taxis. We've just heard from the e-hailing service providers. Meter taxis are also part of the fold in the transport sector. Thank you, sir. Yes, good morning, everybody. Actually, I'm not Mr. Mahano. Mr. Mahano is here, but I'm Mr. Mzaiya, Ruben Mzaiya, the deputy chairperson of South African Meter Taxi Forum. Uh, we are very grateful to be also invited in this process as meter taxi, meter taxis, which are the custodians of the meter taxi industry. Uh, our recognition is very, very appreciated, but I'm very pleased to be here and also Ms. Makazi, because maybe people might say, maybe it's a fly-by night or a sunboat which I saw yesterday. Uh, she was the one who was a chairperson in the portfolio committee in 2016 when we made our presentation on behalf of meter taxis. And uh, meter text is every report, as he knows, is not only, it's, it's an international language where you go anywhere, you'll find it when you need a, a from, go from point A to point B. So our appreciation is, we wish, we know that is our big brother, Santaco, that was here, but we wish from now onwards, we shall be part and parcel of this process so that when we are going to Lihotla, then meter text is voice and also its operation will be also taken into cognition. We, we, we are also very appreciative to Mr. Mbalula and even to Mr. Uh, Blaine Zimande, because Mr. Blaine Zimande made a very big com contribution. As a result of that, all our submissions that we put on the, on the 21st September 2016, he submitted in parliament. They were supposed to be uh, enacted by now. We don't know why, Mr. Mbalula, we shall look at you. We're not saying don't do it. We know you are busy, but at least look at it. Because the conflict that is there between Metatexis and other companies is by design, which we could be saying as the industry, if the government look upon us at that particular time, uh, we shouldn't have that conflict. Say. Okay, I'll do the that. <laughs> Maybe still new. You're still new. You're still new. 
I protect him. He still knew. He was a minister at that time. You know. Yeah. That's why I'm saying we are South Africans. South Africans, they always fight decently. That's why I'm here. But uh, I also take it upon yourself now as a comrade that Meta Texas, uh, some people, you know, when we talk, we always say we are very decent. We use a ball pen when we fight. We don't use guns. But we don't want to be abused because we don't use those guns. I've traveled a lot globally. And some other countries like China, when they saw something happen somewhere, they did it for their own people. You know, I was glad when the business community said they will support minibuses. They must also support us because West Bank and, and uh, Net Bank, Vessels, who is a chairperson of, of uh, a shop right and checkers, they are supporting those cars, not those people. Hence, I'm saying, we pledge them to come also meet our taxes. We want to change that. It's not to say we don't like e-hailing, but you, under the current situation, you cannot compete with somebody who's charging two rand when you know that is an enslavement. But our government should be there assisting us in this regard. I don't want to talk a lot. Thank you very much. Minister Mbalula encouraging Ms. Mzahia, saying now we are talking and this is why we are here. So it promises to be fruitful engagement going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of contribution that we're seeking for. If we are talking solutions, if we are talking groundbreaking uh, agreements that are going to be made to the betterment of the public transport sector, taxis in particular, it's this kind of content that we are after. So yes, Ms. Mzahia, much appreciated. Uh, no holds barred, right? Now we're talking. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to now call upon Mr. Philip Taibo. She is, of course, the president of Santaco, and he will also provide his contribution. Mr. Taibo, the stage is yours. Good morning, everybody. A program director, Minister of Transport, Ndate Fikile Mbalula, Deputy Minister of Transport, Medi Kaledi Magazi, the Director General, Ndate Alec Muyemi, Ndate Zwani, uh, the chairman of the portfolio committee, Meng Kadimeng, the, uh, the president of Salga, leaders of business who are here, Tate Bonolo, leaders of labor uh, represented here, leaders of the taxi industry from various sectors, guests and members of the media. Today marks another journey for the taxi industry. We venture into this, this road and simultaneously confident that this journey is the last leg of the one undertaken in 1996. When the taxi industry spoke boldly in unison that yes to regulations, we are saying yes to regulations, Minister, we support that. Yes, to formalization. And I want the media to hear me very clearly that I'm not actually uh, borrowing this formalization from anywhere else, especially when you compare to what has happened in the industry and the formalization that we've been speaking to. And indeed, Yes, to economic emancipation. Minister, the economic emancipation, if I have to indicate, is one of the three pillars that uh, the, government of, uh, the government of the ANC, led by the ANC, brought to the industry in 1996. And also, during the 2000, uh, when Minister Dalla Omar 
brought all the taxi operators together. The issue, the issues which were to be addressed by the taxi industry was three. It was built on three pillars. One, it was unity within the taxi industry. Two, it was the eradication of violence. Three, it was the economic emancipation. Since that fateful year, that later translated into what is known as Santaco in 2001, the taxi industry has always argued that whatever decision government make about the taxi industry has not been consistent with the NTPT 1996 recommendation. This has broken our trust in government. And I must indicate, and I'm very impressed and very proud of the director general that we are having, because you can see that somebody who has gone out to research for him to have this information. And Minister, thank you again for presenting us with the Director General of Mr. Miami's caliber. South Africa is now in the sixth administration with 25 years of democracy, but the taxi industry remained unsubsidized. This is despite it accounting for 70% of the transportation of employees, the majority of whom are government employees. Taxes continue to be financed at high interest rates despite statistics. South Africa showing the taxi industry as the most preferred mode of transport in the country standing at 68%. Despite carrying the, one, uh, the 15 million uh, passengers uh, per day whom on a daily basis make the economy turn. The infrastructure, including ranking facilities that they use, is of concern. And I'm very happy that I'm sitting next to the president of Salga, and I was whispering into her ear that, President Kadime, we, we will come to you because we need to assist. Uh, Minister, we are, we are aware that uh, there is problem of money in South Africa. But we don't just want to say, Menkadimen, give us tax rents. We want to come with the solutions, Menkadimen. In our own plan, uh, developed in 2009, dubbed the TR3 2020 strategy, we offered government solutions to our problems. Government embraced our initiatives and committed to fund it. Our strongest argument in the TR3 2020 strategy document is, for, uh, for instance, was that an integrated transport system without integration of ownership is meaningless to, to the taxi industry. We advanced this precisely because we saw such endeavors by government as an attempt to collapse the taxi industry into small segments. In the contrary, we continue to find ourselves under siege through various pieces of legislation that took away from operators the legitimate right to operate a sustainable business and the constitutional right to subsidy, among others. Minister, I've seen recognition being given to farmers being given to former apartheid institutions. And uh, one was asking yourself that uh, since they, there was this transition that was to take place, why is the taxi industry not uh, also uh, operated or given the same rights? For instance, the, operate, the permit of the taxi operator minister, when it was issued, it was issued as a permanent business permit. And uh, we saw later on that it was now changed to five years. And we would like to engage with the minister around that because we believe that uh, the, the constitution uh, of South Africa uh, provides us with uh, uh, the necessary responses to that. But we will discuss that later with the minister when we engage you on these issues. 
However, since assuming office, Minister, you have assured us that through the planned national tax in Lekhotla, all this will change, and I must say, Minister, you have been very consistent about this. While we embrace the national tax in Daba, we must express your ability to ensure that as from 1st April, we'll see the taxi industry being part of the subsidy regime, speaking volume about your intentions. And I must indicate that uh, Minister, and maybe I must also be brave enough to apologize that while we were waiting for your answer, we decided to take uh, to put our own answer in your process. But you came back and you really disciplined us and you showed us how to do things. And we will continue, Minister, supporting the processes of government in favor of uh, our commuters. For 25 years, the taxi industry has been at pains to get government to include to include it in the subsidy regime without success. For 25 years, we felt our services to the general commuting public being un unappreciated. We know that modalities of our participation are yet to be determined, but for this alone, we say thank you to you, Minister. The taxi industry is the bed bedrock of the public passenger transport. Apart from ferrying 15 million passengers alone, it also fits into the business of buses and trains, including how train. So competition has never been a problem for us. On a yearly basis, the taxi industry alone uh, spends. Minister, we spend, we spend 39 million billion rands expenditure on fuel consumption, just only on fuel. That's what we are spending. Seven billion rand on manufacturing value of new vehicle purchased. And for now, I must indicate the taxi industry is purchasing every month a thousand vehicles. George, you are my witness. 6.3 billion rand on vehicle financing and loans. 2.4 billion rand spent on insurance. At least 700 families, Minister, uh, and, and here we have excluded 700,000 families supported by the taxi industry, and we have excluded actually, and if you take that into consideration, you'll see that we are over a million rent when you take all the hawkers who are making business at the taxi ranks. It is said that with this huge financial muscle, muscle the taxi industry still finds itself in the periphery of the mainstream economy. We remain beggars to the wealth, to the wealth we are rightfully entitled to. We have witnessed equity ownership opportunities pass us. As manufacturing plants reached our shores, while the Department of Trade and Industry shared success of black industrialists in some areas, Nothing really has been invested in the taxi industry to ensure its prosperity. We have been on our own. Today you will launch the public discourse platform, uh, Minister, affording the public, opinion makers, and experts to contribute in shaping the Inversage taxi industry of the future. We are therefore alive with the level of engagement we will find at the National Taxi Lukhutla, which we see as the battle of soul, of a soul of the taxi industry, a lot of work lies ahead in preparation for this eventuality. But we can also assure you, Minister, that using the NTT recommendation as a benchmark, our participation in all these processes are solidly with the intention to reclaim the taxi industry space as the economic powerhouse of the public passenger transport in South Africa. As we read the headlines about your ambitious plans for the taxi industry in the media, 
We want to make it clear that we intend to live every part of that ambition when we return from the Lekhotla. And Minister, finally let me indicate that we as a taxi industry in this country, we will, be, we will continue to be supportive of the endeavors of government in finding solutions. Uh, because at the end of the day, we must make the community happy. Thank you very much. Another round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen, for President Tayabosh. I think what he's had to say is very important because uh, there are some, especially in the media space, that are of the view that uh, the president of Santago and the minister do not talk, that they do not uh, have uh, thorough engagements, that they don't enjoy a cordial relationship. But on the contrary, I think uh, President Taibash will remember that among the first key constituents that uh, the minister met with when he assumed his current position was the taxi industry. And in fact, the first day in office, I remember that. In fact, the first day in office, Minister Balula said, I want to get the layer of the land. I want to know what is happening. Among those who are top of my agenda are, of course, those who are in the taxi industry, and we need to know what's happening there. And I believe that relationship has continued to date. Even in the wake of the outbreak of COVID-19, there have been regular conversations and discussions. And yes, sometimes uh, you would not see eye to eye, but I think even Banabamoto from time to time uh, will disagree, right? And then they will remember that, no, but we have a common objective here, which is to benefit the commuters, to benefit the industry, to benefit the government and the country as a whole. And it is those um, common points that always bring you together. So thank you very much for that. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to move on to issues of governance representing Salga. It is now a privilege, it's an honor, it's a great pleasure uh, to call upon Ms. Tembing Kadimeng. She is the president of Salga. A round of applause for her as well, please. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director, Honorable Minister of Transport, Minister Figle Mbalula, the Deputy Minister, Medical Edi Makadze, Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Transport, Chair Babu Mseven Zizwane, our MEC from Transport in Gauteng, Kulube, Mwanare Eshu, Jacob Mamabulo. I have adopted myself to be the forcefully a daughter of Limpopo. So all of those who come from there, DG, I force myself that they are my brothers and my uncles to my children. The chairperson and the president of Santago, Dr. Daiposh, it's good to meet you again this morning and we we'll continue with our conversation on behalf of the local government sector. Our taxi industry representatives who are also here and connected online, our business representatives who are here, the general members of our public, our representative from Labour, esteemed guest partnership from the media. I greet you all uh, from the South African Local Government Association, which is representative of uh, 20, 257 municipalities in South Africa, and we are here to appreciate the opportunity, Honorable Minister, you have given us this morning to join and be partners in this uh, mining, I mean, in this minibus taxi industry. I've, I've been talking to mines yesterday. The launch of the public discourse engagement today, and also to be part of the reimagining of the future of transport and how it could look like. I must thank you, Honorable Minister, that you have started the process with us. Half the time, local government is at the end of the chain. And that is why it becomes difficult to real, for government to realize some of its key aspirations. If we are not taken on board, we become a slow partner. And the cooperation and the speed that you need from us, from the local sector, then becomes an additional add-on, and we become late and you become unhappy. 
We are often overlooked fundamentally, but we are gaining traction as well in joining the one government, one plan, and one budget. And we are realizing that we are happy. In my other life, I'm an executive mayor of Pulukwane Municipality, and that entire post taught me a very painful lesson through Santago in Limpopo. We built a road in one of our main streets in town, and we started receiving complaints that taxi drivers are just stopping anywhere, and the road is in the middle, in between a suburb. We're connecting two suburbs, and uh, communities were very happy. And I went to Santago, and I said, but my people are complaining that one, you are driving too fast, two, you are stopping anywhere else. And they said, Mayor, we're allowing to give you a ride in the morning as we commute with your people, taking them to their various destination. And I acceded to the request I got into a taxi, a very beautiful ride. I have a beautiful picture of that morning. I was a passenger, and the first, person, the first lady said, can I please disembark here? And then the taxi driver asked me, Mayor, where must I stop? And I was like, Ish, where must you stop? And then he said, OK. We squeezed out of the road, and people were hooting, and uh, we assisted the lady to get off, and we got back on our journey. It's a main road. Uh, Mema Katsi know it very well. It's our Marshall Street. I think it's one of the longest streets in town in Polokwan. And in my view, we had done well because we had increased the road to four lanes. And I was like, OK, let's continue. We continued. And the second, it's towards the CBD. The second uh, passenger said, towards Picard Street, can I please disembark? And the taxi driver complied and said, oh, executive mayor, when must I stop? <laughs> and then I realized that in our self-planning, we didn't consult a key stakeholder. And at that time, we were busy outgrowing the outspan road, which is also taking our commuters towards uh, the Bendo, Thornhill Drive with new supermarkets and shopping complexes. We were in the middle of that uh, project. The contractor was on site. And I was forced to say to the contractor, hold on. We had to stop the contractor and go back and create side caps where the taxi can get out of the road and the passenger can disembark. And then they calculated with me, if you put a cap here, you put a cap here, you put a cap here, you will realize that none of your other road users will complain. And I think that was the greatest lesson for me to understand that in our planning, if we are all together, the situation can, could be. So we are planning authorities, Honorable Minister, and we are required often to plan budget, design, construct, and manage municipal infrastructure and transport facilities. A key instrument in this planning processes are the integrated transport plans, which include the operating transport lessons, I mean licensing plans. And these plans require humans and capacity at a municipal level. And it can only be enabled to be correct if that skill is at a municipal level. And in my own municipality, big in Limpopo by our own standard, is that we did not have this skill that is required to do what was necessary at the time. And we had to ask from the city of Johannesburg for assistance to be able to do that. So if we are starting together and we combine our plans, we could be able at a municipal level, even if it doesn't mean hiring a new person, but rotating the skill just to assist us to plan design so that the remaining municipality can implement a properly planned and a thought of as a partner in the process of ensuring that we all benefit in this business. Again, integrating land use and transport, particularly considering the integrated transport operations is key, fundamental in municipalities in ensuring that we schedule and assist 
in being a dream for a lower part of our communities to ensure that devolution of functions from national should be done and the skill capacitated. The management of public transport facilities also needs to show confidence and evidence in consistent approaches to ensure that many areas in our public sector improve. To this end, as Salga, we have identified that we will be a strategic partner in the areas of focus and work in partnership to develop proposals and improvement in this plan. You will only be better if you accept that you have had shortcomings or you have shortcomings as a sector and you will need transport to assist you as a municipality so that the outcome is also all embracive and all makes us jubilant within the sector, which is mean the municipality, yourself and the department, the partner in the taxi industry, and at the end, a happy uh, commuter. Let me conclude by welcoming the dialogue process going forward, noting that it happens at a time where we're confronted with COVID-19, where we can draw quite a number of good lessons, partnerships and corporations, which are essential in finding sustainable solutions for the challenges that we are facing today. Salga is ready and available on behalf of all our municipalities to be a key stakeholder in this partner. I thank you. My goodness, what a lesson to learn. But uh, I think it's something that we all took note of as well to say it's important to consult and engage far and wide whenever you are implementing anything. I think that's a perfect depiction of a government for the people and by the people, and which is the reason why Minister Mbalula uh, made sure that we find all the stakeholders and search every nook and cranny to engage all South Africans and to have them also contribute to, to re imagining this taxi industry and finding ways towards reaching uh, that taxi industry of the future. And uh, which is why he said for those who are not able to attend because of uh, COVID-19 regulations and restrictions, we should make sure that this is broadcast far and wide, mainstream media, social media. He made sure that we also have these similar processes take place in the provinces. Those who are in the far flung areas of South Africa and the rural areas they will also be able to participate by ways of community platform and the like. It's important that we all engage because you never know that breakthrough idea that will catapult the industry to higher heights may come from some obscure place where you least expect. So we value all the contribution that will be coming through. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me now to call upon the chairperson of uh, the Transport Portfolio Committee to give us his short message of support and address, Mr. Museben Zizwane. May we please give him a round of applause as well, please. Thank you. The program director, thank you. Um, Pardon me for using the back route. Uh, Minister of Transport, Comrade Figile April Mbalula, Deputy Minister, uh, Medi Kiledi Makazi, Member of the Executive Council in Gauteng, Mr. Jacob Mamabolu, President of Salga Metembi Nkadimeng, the Director General of the Department of Transport, Ntate Alec Muyemi, leaders from our entities, all officials of the transport, President of Santaco, Ntate Philip Taibos, the taxi industry representatives that are present here today, all other stakeholders that are with us. Greetings to you all. Thank you, Minister, for organizing such a crucial event and inviting the Portfolio Committee to witness the department start a journey that should end by formalizing the taxi industry, enabling the industry to benefit itself the, commuter, the commuters and the South African economy at large. 
As the name suggests, this is a, a launch of the Taxi Lekhutla to resolve challenges that faces the industry. It is our plea as the committee that all stakeholders should commit themselves to, this, to the outcome of this event and turn a new leaf in this industry. I'm sure that will go also for Ntate, Mzwaiya, uh, all that you have given to the former chairperson of transport, just remind her and also take it to this Lekhotla uh, so that uh, what you desire becomes part of the plan. We are pleased with this initiative. I must mention here that we were also consulted and Minister and Deputy Minister, we remain committed ourselves to this process. And we will be watching the space that once resolutions are taken, they are honored and they are implemented. We want to request the industry to focus and look forward. Once unity has been forged, let's move in that path and take that painful step to unite the people of South Africa, blacks in particular. Otherwise, Minister, because I'm standing between you and our lunch, I wish to be short and just say, I'm a South African citizen. Yes, I come from Free State, but I wish to be seen as a South African. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, in the interest of time, I'm not going to bore you with a long introduction of the minister that you can quickly Google. I'm going to try and give you a, a bit of an introduction that you may not be familiar with, but that my colleagues in the Department of Transport can attest to. It is a privilege for me to call upon one of the most hardworking individuals I know who is incredibly passionate about this process and has taken personal interest to make sure that it happens. I can tell you that he will call you all hours of the night, myself and Esse too and Lawrence and all of us, to make sure that we've done things correctly because he wanted this process to be one that is dignity, that has respect, that is done thoroughly. And uh, I think for that he deserves a resounding round of applause applause, ladies and gentlemen, for going over and above the call of duty, the Honorable Minister of Transport, Minister Filim Mbalula. Thanks, boss. This is not sanitized. I don't know why. Uh, but for all other people, this was sanitized, but. Uh, no, thank you very much, um, Ayanda, Ali Payne, the program director and spokesperson of the Department of Transport, uh, the deputy minister, Mary Kennedy Makazi, the chair of the portfolio committee, Mr. Msebenzi Zizwani, it is important that uh, you attend and uh, you responded positively to the invitation because the portfolio committee oversee our work and our commitments and they hold us accountable. But the portfolio committee also, that's where we pass the laws. And uh, Mr. Mzaiya, I know you to be a brave man. And uh, the Lekhotla is important because we must open up and talk the truth and strategize in order to resolve the inadequacies that arise in the system. And uh, the portfolio committee is in the process uh, in terms of the bill on e-hailing we're talking about. We are running with it. 
and it's not uh, behind. I think it was interrupted by the COVID-19. So we are on track with regard to that. MEC of Gauteng, uh, Comrade Jacob Mamabulu, uh, is a very strong partner and the leading Gauteng is the center of where things are happening. <clears throat> Tembing Kadimeng, the president of Salga. Salga is important to us because transport is a concurrent function. We are not like police, command and control. It's a concurrent function. People have got their own federation, small anyana, in their own corners. They've got uh, a voice of some sort about what they can do, what they can spend. So it's a concurrent function. And local government is important in relation to this work. So when Salga is here, all the other issues that we'll be addressing in terms of uh, the taxi industry, Salga is an important partner in terms of implementation. The president of uh, Santaco, Ndate Daibosh, Philip Daibosh, is a leading partner in terms of uh, what we want to achieve out of the Lekhutla. He's been around for many years. And uh, during the times of Dala Omar, from the beginning, let me say, Mac Maharaj, Dala Omar, and then they came. I think uh, who else came? Spundevele, Jeff Hadebe Spundevele, and then uh, Ben Martens, the poor Peters. The poor didn't come before Ben Martens or after. The poor Peters, Joe Maswangani, Blayton Zimande, and then uh, Figilem Balula. And uh, all other stakeholders present here, e hailing, a meter taxi present here, distinguished guests. I want to thank you, uh, distinguished guests, particularly from business and the unions. Uh, the unions are important because when I went to address NetLeg, the unions were very vocal in relation to what must happen in this industry. And I'm shocked that the only Fedusa turned up. But I did call Kosatu in the morning because Nagtu was going to come. And then uh, I had an apology that uh, because of prior commitments and short notice, they could not make it. But I thought they would live in San even if it's a shop steward somewhere to come. Because it's important for Kosatu and uh, all other unions. But I want to thank Fedusa from the bottom of my heart. Let's walk this journey. Uh, you were very vociferous at NetLeg about Section 77 and 100%. And I explained to you that what are the challenges that are facing this industry and what we'll be grappling upon. So the time of flexing the muscle in the discourse and not talking and assisting what needs to happen I think uh, we should put it in our back banner. And uh, this is the process we are starting in the Department of Transport. And it's not a reaction. It's something we planned from day one. It's our mandate. When President Ramaphosa appointed me, at least not at night, daylight, nani born, <laughs> as a Minister of Transport, one of the priorities of the sixth administration, when we asked for your votes, we said we'll formalize this industry will regulate it, and they will ensure that it is subsidized. Didn't we say that? Yeah. When we were asking for you, and you attempted to even fo form a political party, but we clobbered you. And that political party did not fly. So we went to the taxi people, and this is what we said we must do. We'll formalize this industry, and this is where we are. And government long took that decision. And we'll speak to that as we go. And I'm very happy that the unions are, are present here. And NEDLEC, the constituency, uh, 
of, of NetLag sector is here with us, and uh, your input, sir, is valued. And don't pull back. I could see you were looking at Thai Bosch and you were afraid to say all what you want to say. Don't pull back. Work with us. We want construction, constructive engagement and realistic. Uh, because part of the problem of South Africa, we have created a lot of problems for this country. And that is why we are here where we are today. When Bafana Bafana lose, we don't tell them straight in their face that they are losers. We say they tried. That's the problem of South Africa. When people are going wrong, we tell them that, no, they tried, shame. Because they, they, they try what? You are a loser. You have lost. And then uh, you will only bring yourself up because you know that you have lost. And then uh, you've got to work yourself up because you deserve to be there. And you must first look at the country, look at where you come from, even at home, how you socialized. They will always tell you, Asima Zigelo in our family. I don't know which passage he did not go through because all my children went through this. Rich or poor, people will pride themselves about family as a root. So it is important that we understand where we come from and that we deal with the subject issues head on in terms of this Lihutla. A few months ago, and let me also thank the media for showing interest in this process, uh, because uh, it is important. Because it, this is not just a discourse and a talk shop. It is a discourse with a meaning that must produce a result. But your interests show the importance of the taxi industry and transport in our country. Because you go with your cameras right in the taxi ranks. You are in the taxis because some of you don't have uh, cars. But you know the life of public transport in the Republic. And I wish to acknowledge you and thank you for uh, attending this discourse and follow up on populating our discussions. A few months ago, I declared my intention to convene a national taxi in Daba, which will emerge with a groundbreaking compact. Uh, that will take the transformation of the taxi industry to its logical conclusion. The outcomes of this industry will not be lip service, but a tangible and achievable program of action that will set the industry on a sustainable path. We began this journey right at the moment after we were appointed by the president. This remain part of our agenda. From NetMap and also from our manifesto of the six administration to complete what needed to be done for the taxi industry. Ladies and gentlemen, the history of the taxi industry is littered with gruesome tales of conflicts and violence. Some of it does persist today. That has left many people dead and families robbed of breadwinners. It is a history of struggles for survival. This is an industry that has pioneered its own growth and evolution despite difficult odds. When Alec Muemi, the DG, was tracing the history of this industry, he did allude to some of this. 1987-88, this industry was deregulated. Was deregulated, meaning that everybody must go and see for themselves. And then that is when apartheid regime used elements in the industry to sponsor public violence. That is why concept of Inkabi, when you want killers, 
you find them in the taxi industry. They are trained, they stay there. It comes with that particular history. Many initiatives aimed at forging unity in the industry have seen the light of the day over the last decades, and many have failed. Now, it is a, a decade of good and the bad, in the sense that there is an unfinished business, which is what we are about. And our four peers, as I recall their names, and among them, Comrade Dalla Omar, laid the basis firmly in terms of regulating the taxi industry and undoing the past in terms of this industry. The first administration of the democratic South Africa initiated the national taxi team, which is called the Entrepreneur T, to find a lasting solution to the challenges facing the industry and to develop a blueprint for its sustainability. Ntate Tai Bosch, wherever I'm with him and others, he speak at length about this particular process. We all know that the final recommendations of the Entrepreneur T were a product of robust and honest engagements with both the industry and civil society. These recommendations, which were a product of consensus, between the taxi industry and civil society affirm the need for an industry that is formalized, effectively regulated, and economically empowered. It is 26 years into freedom. And the question you must ask, yes, you own, you, you, you contribute 40 billion rand. As the taxi industry combined, it can be fuel and all of that. But do you own anything in this industry? That is the question we must ask. And that is the question we must answer. Unity of the industry is sacrosanct and central to any form of regulation or empowerment. I've been assured by the industry that we all share a common vision of a united taxi industry that is able to speak in one voice. There are areas where we are not in agreement, but the public discourse platform will provide us with a platform to engage robustly and find each other. The National Taxi Lichutla will be a platform where we will consolidate consensus on sustainable ways to formalize and regulate the industry. This will be underpinned by an economic empowerment model that must benefit every single taxi operator and not, thus, not only those who are in leadership. An assessment of how far we have come since the acceptance of the final recommendations of the Entrepreneur T will underpin the discussion documents that will be released in the coming weeks covering various themes. The National Taxi Lichuta will be about reimagining a taxi industry of the future, where it is a major player in the economy. Many critical challenges remain and require our collective wisdom and unity of purpose to tackle them in a decisive manner. Unity of the industry remains a pervasive challenge as violence and conflict driven by turf wars and leadership contestations continues unabated. Associations remain unregulated and operators are not held accountable for their conduct through an enforceable code of conduct. Leadership of the South African National Taxi Council, Santaco, as a recognized industry representative body is contested. The taxi industry continues to operate as an informal sector on the fringes of our economy. It is not structured along legally recognized business units, and many operators do not contribute to the tax base in the form of 
corporate tax. I know that the Thai Bosch contest this point with me all the time, and he says that we pay tax. And I'm saying we don't pay corporate tax and do not comply with the labor laws to ensure workers are protected. In COVID-19, drivers, Vula Valas and all of that could not benefit from UIF because they are not registered. They just wake up, go to work. When you die, you die. You don't get anything from the industry. So we need to shape up the business model. We need to shape up the empowerment model so that we are not made to fight over Ingata and Skos and Yasnis Lung. Lila Selepa Ingata, Kota Inya Maiko, Nikapile, Kota Nikape Ingata, Inya Maimkil. The meat is gone, but you are only left with the fat, and you are fighting for the fat. So we must fight for the real thing ownership. The economic model in this country, if we talk about radical economic transformation, it must be proven with the industry, the taxi industry. Radical economic transformation must be proven with this particular industry. These are not moments for insurrectionary phrase mongering. It's about tangible. What do we mean by empowerment? How does the government come to the party? How does the taxi industry also get to own this? You listen to some of the things we are putting on the table for a robust debate going to the INDAB. The regulatory framework remains weak and ineffective due to a fragmented approach in law enforcement. Where you come from, Tembi, you are doing your own thing. In Bloemfontein, they're doing their own thing. Because transport is a concurrent function, it is important that we must unite our approach. We are hosting the National INDAB, or Lekhutla, from the 29th of October to the 30th of October, 2020, at the end of the October transport month, which means we've got September and the whole month to accelerate work and discussions on some of these important I issues. However, the build-up towards the Lihuta will consist of the following activities. Today is one of those we launch the Lihuta and explain to you through this launch what are we tackling and we shall go into the details in terms of that. We are tackling a fundamental and close the gap on the following issues. Regulating the industry, which I will go into deeper details on that. Unity of the industry. Formalization of the industry. Empowerment and subsidy of the industry. And once all these four are achieved, then we can talk professionalization what the DG is dreaming of that uh, is chicken or beef. You won't get it in the taxi. What we want at the end is professionalization of a driver who knows that. Have you all fastened your safety belts? Have you all fastened your safety belts? Go through the routine and ensure that everybody else, everything is done. Single ticketing, money does not circulate. Four by four, eight legacy seats. We kill it. Professionalization will be achieved as the fifth element of the four, if we agree. And uh, we've got to then ensure that all of those things are addressed in, in this endeavor. There is not only a consensus, but there is an agreement. It's going to be robust in the sense that we are not going to go to Stellenbosch, to all other universities to help us. They will help us at the end. But to begin to interrogate these issues is going to be informed by the practical experience of those who operate in this industry. We don't want somebody who talk about taxis, 
but he's never owned a taxi. And he doesn't understand the challenges the taxi industry is, 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 is dealing with. That's what is important. Those are the four issues we need to resolve in terms of the taxi industry. We will have discussion documents that will be released in the next coming weeks. The task team charged with coordinating this effort will engage with various stakeholders, as we'll have done. And I, we have seen some of the stakeholders. And I'm also today inviting them to continue to be part of us and, broadly speaking, everyone else to make a contribution. It does not matter. Organized and unorganized, make a contribution in this particular process. We'll have webinars because we are not allowed to have mass gatherings. Uh, we will not be in a position to do that. Webinars, we'll have them and so on to engage with stakeholders, opinion makers, those who've got a view on the following issues, what must happen to the taxi industry. We will also benchmark ourselves against countries that have achieved the result on these four issues. We don't operate in an island. We will look in the African continent, which country has achieved formalization, have fully integrated with government, have implemented subsidy. We know the United Kingdom is one model. We know New York City is one model. We will also need to know in the African continent, in situations like us, which governments have actually achieved the same result. And also look at the path we have traversed since from 1996. We will have provincial mahutas in the provinces starting from the district because we want our people to speak and speak for themselves. So the launch of this public a platform is an invitation to the taxi industry to the workers, commuters, and the rest of civil society to engage with this discussion and tackle the opportunity to participate in formulating the blueprint for taxi industry of the future. The discussion documents that will inform the content of the public discourse and the provincial Mahota, ultimately the national taxi Lakota cover the following issues which I said I will elaborate. First, unity and uh, leadership. The NTT final recommendations that were accepted by government directed that leadership structures must be established at national, provincial, and regional levels, representing the entirety of the industry. The leadership structure must represent all types of taxi operations short distance, long distance, and meter taxis at all levels. Over the last 25 years, a lot of progress was made in this regard with the establishment of Santago in 2001. The diagnostic path we have traversed and the, process and the progress made over the last 25 years means that we must have an honest and robust conversation on all these issues. This includes the leadership of the industry and whether there is a need to review some of the choices we have made over the years to accommodate others. And what approach are we going to take in relation to that? We recognize Santaco as the leader of the industry up until today, and I explained that even to the president. And uh, to us in government, that is why we even support Santaco financially. It's not a secret. For the first time I had uh, at the portfolio committee, Mr. Chaperson of the portfolio committee, that this thing is not known. How can we give 25 million to Santaco and you don't know? Then you don't read the annual reports of the Department of Transport. You only read uh, annual reports of the Department of Sports. Because if you read transport annual reports, you will know that Santaco 
is sponsored, supported by government. Its offices are in government. And uh, it's not correct, again, to say that their, their financial statements are in a, in a total state of disaster. And DG can speak on that. It's incorrect. What has actually happened is that there are disagreements between bodies that have decided to go their own, like NTA leadership in this country. And uh, in this particular instance, they've got a view and a perspective in terms of taxi leadership in the Republic. And uh, we have been talking to NTA even last night, till midnight, we're talking to them, including about their participation today. And to explain to them that government recognizes Santaco, and that is why Taibosh, Philip Taibosh, not because he comes from Bloemfontein or wherever he comes from, I found him here, spoke today. Not that NTA does not have an opinion about what must happen. They do robust views, and they believe in diversity and all of that in terms of broadening this, but government can never deal with the taxi industry if it's fragmented. So we must have an honest conversation about this particular matter. And it is important to do that. Even throughout the pandemic and managing what is happening in the country, we have been talking to Santaco and to NTA in all fronts as government in engaging with transport in the Republic. And the process of this Likhutla will examine some of these particular issues. And they speak about 2001 and where they come from, where it was Satako and it changed to Santaco to accommodate each other. But in the end, that did not happen. And our biggest mistake, again, as government, which we need to criticize ourselves, we allowed that gap to continue over the years. And we never address it. I don't know who you want to address it. You allow the gap to grow and then uh, things to develop legs, the situation to continue. Now, President Ramaphosa says we cannot allow that. We must deal with the taxi industry as a united force so that we can address the issues that we are talking about. And moreover, this is a black industry. Gone are the days when black people used to own taxis for white people, and they become front. But today, black people own taxis, but by a shown and because the, when you get retrenched in the mine, the first business you think of is a taxi. And then you come here, you drown. Gone is the business. So we seek to address all this discussions uh, going forward in the Lukhutla. The discussions will also look at models that include making a case for the apex leadership structure to be a council, whose leaders must not be encumbered on associations. We have no intention of elevating or establishing an association to a position of an apex industry representative body. Our commitment is towards a council that truly represents every operator without fear or favor. The Texel Khutla must interrogate and ask the question, what kind of council should be an apex industry representative body? Should it be a statutory body established through an act of parliament with roles and powers prescribed in law? Or the current status quo must actually continue? Should it be a professional body mandated to develop and enforce industry standards? Should it be a voluntary association that exists to look after the interest of its members? On regulation, discussions about the regulation primarily revolve around operating licenses and enforcement. The challenges experienced over the years relating to the issuing of operating licenses 
which includes challenges of non-responsiveness of municipalities, Tembi, to applications resulting in saturation of routes as these operating licenses are issued without due regard to transport planning. The point that you yourself was talking about, dear Mayor. The current planning framework and the extent to which it affects the issuing of operating licenses will come under scrutiny with a view to emerge with a model that advances our objectives. The prevalence of illegal operators affects the industry and government in many ways. We are saying as the Department of Transport in terms of inertis, we've got 137 taxi operators. But we know, as I speak now with you, we've got more or less 300,000 on the ground. Now, how am I going to feed you when you are so mixed up? You must all come by queue. Means it must be regulated. When we see you on the road, there must be proper regulation that you are on point. That is what needs to happen. Finally, the legal operators, they, they shrink the revenue base by complicating the supply side of business through uncontrolled entry into the market. Secondly, they provide perverse incentive for conflict. Thirdly, they worsen the industry safety profile as they are more prone to employing illegal and dangerous tactics to get customers and maximize profits. Fourthly, they distort planning and by extension adversely affect the efficacy of planning and law enforcement. Lastly, they perpetuate criminality. The discussions will also look at uh, strong disincentives aimed at those who operate illegally with penalties that include monetary penalties impoundment of vehicles, suspension of driver's licenses, or combination of measures. However, this conversation will take into account the current reality of the significant number of operators in the industry without operating licenses. This includes a number of e ailing providers and seven-seater vehicles on our roads. When we clear clear ourselves going forward, it means when we undertake the route, it means you must bring all your particulars to the fore. But this is a discussion we are basically going to have and how we foresee uh, the regulating process in South Africa uh, so that we deal with uh, uh, legit people within the system. Now coming to industry empowerment model. The taxi Likota must emerge with an empowerment model that truly empowers the industry with the real beneficiaries being individual operators. We have committed to reimagining the taxi recapitalization program such that the real beneficiaries of this massive public investment are taxi operators rather than commercial banks, retailers, and other corporates. Now, you have seen a movie before we started. That is why we brought you here. I wanted us to be in the sun so that we can get some vitamin D. That will be good for COVID-19. Now they put us here, and it's cold. Chances of contracting this disease are 100%. The sooner we finish, the better. But the sun was the brilliant place to be at. Now, this is recapitalization destroying of taxes and all of that. And we are saying that in terms of the empowerment model, we're spending billions in terms of this project. We must reimagine uh, this in terms of the discussion. We know that uh, we've got an impasse with the taxi industry on some of these particular issues. Our empowerment model is also going to speak to recapitalization in terms of what needs to be done. 
To date, government has spent in excess of 4 billion rand and will spend more billions over the next five years in this particular project. The end game is a taxi industry that is able to recapitalize itself and benefits of this business cascading down to the last operator uh, on the ground. Discussions include the establishment of corporate entities as empowerment vehicles of choice to ensure economic benefits reach all operators in the industry. Various options are being considered, uh, which include either establishing a national cooperative bank owned by the taxi industry, or establishing a national private company that will participate in economic activity on behalf of the operators, or a combination of various models. That is the discussion we must resolve at the end of. We must not be apologetic about creation of a business value chain that is entirely owned by the taxi industry with strict conditions to comply with tax and labor laws alongside conduct uh, that reinforces unity. We say that we pour fuel, we fix the tires, where we buy the product in the value chain. Where does that end up? How does it basically benefit the taxi industry? The Lekhutla must agree that operators who get involved in conflict and taxi violence should face severe penalties, which may include withdrawal of their operating licenses and any economic benefit sponsored by government. We have made a firm commitment to introduce a subsidy system that includes full participation of the taxi industry. The taxi industry transports on a daily basis commute 15 million people, as in comparison to trains and all other modes of transport. In South Africa, we are talking about an integrated transport network, IPTN, going forward, and this is what we are implementing. And the taxi industry is an integral part of that. When we raise the issue that the taxi industry can and should be subsidized by government, many began to ask, no, it's not possible. Certain things must actually happen. So when we talk about regulating formalization and all of those things, among others include empowerment and subsidy. And that is why in our planning cycle, we are planning that by 1st April in the next financial year, once we had concluded the issues of debate and discussion at the taxi industry, subsidy for the industry will kick in for the next financial year. Those discussions are at an advanced stage between the Department of Transport and our breadwinner, Tito Mboweni, in the country because we've got to finalize those discussions so that in terms of our planning, we are able to effect this into practical implementation by the 1st of April, not because it's my birthday date, 1st of April, and it's not the April's full date, 1st of April, we kick in the implementation of what this Lekhutla have resolved, and that includes subsidization. We are hard at work at the present moment as a department to reprioritize whatever we've got, including the grants, to meet the goals of what we want to achieve at the Indaba. So everything else will be looked at in terms of what we want and what we want to achieve going forward. So the Likuta is not just a talk shop. It's important to our goals. It is a conversation that we must have, and we can't talk past each other. It is a compact we must produce. Today we launch, and the 30th of August, we produce a deal for everyone. And that deal 
uh, for meter taxis and e-hailing is already in the pipeline in the form of the legislation that is coming into being. And uh, that deal will also envisage this reimagining that must include the perspective on carbon emissions. We must not be caught unprepared in this country like it happened all the time. You ask people, how did Uber arrive in this country when there is government and it was not regulated? Nobody is able to answer you. And you ask them about many other things, including the e -tolls. Because you go to Germany, you find people not using toll gates. You copy that, you bring it to South Africa. But we have to use toll gate to go to the toll Yeah, we have to use it every five minutes. They didn't know about it. They thought it's well cap. Later on, they were told, hey, we have to use it every time. But hey, we have to use it every time. We have to use it every even those who don't pay etols in Soweto, I as Wakoki Baba, I'm a etols, and all of that. But taxis and buses transporting the working class and everybody don't pay etols. It's only me and you who's supposed to pay. But let's leave that discussion because you will second guess me again uh, on that one. It's one another headache that I must resolve, and I'm on the process of resolving. So, now, it is important that we must understand that these are the things that we want to achieve and that we want to implement by the beginning of the new financial year and introduce the subsidy scheme for the taxi industry. So, taxi industry, majority black and a black industry. We subsidize buses, fine and good. Yes, we'll continue to do that. They carry our people. But what do we say? We say public transport must be safer and affordable. So when we talk about subsidy, we don't only talk about the operator. We mean even those who use public transport, it must be affordable. And it must be professional. Everybody must use taxis back and forth to work. Today, to pay for your own taxi per month is about 18,000 and 15,000. You must pay. That's why a taxi driver is always in a hurry. Because Umoshel is cut. And then when he arrives there and the owner is counting the money, he says, Uya Chelta, Kawena. Ulimali, I'm. Why Limali short and I'm charge? Because every day he knows how much he gets. Worse with COVID 19, it's worse because people are not commuting on a daily basis. So we have made that firm commitment. And we are announcing it here today as government. This is what we are going to be discussing when we talk about uh, empowerment model with the taxi industry. And uh, we're going ahead with its implementation in the new financial year. Discussion on professionalization include a number of important issues that impact on commuters and other road users. Uh, in addition to addressing universal access to taxis, and related infrastructure for those who are physically challenged and discussion will also entail uh, the following in terms of professionalization, road safety, the, the conduct of taxi operators on the road, displaying flagrant disregard of the law, and the rights of other road users remains a pervasive problem and will find expression in the public discourse. Options on the table for discussion include a proposal for an enforceable code of conduct supported by a penalty regime, which may, amongst others, include a form of demerit system similar to ARTO. The second part of the second point in terms of professionalization of the industry include a discussion on customer care and community safety. Shoddy customer service and safety of commuters continue to characterize industry operations. Penalties for operators who violate customer care standards, which may be incorporated into the proposed code of conduct, will be considered. Complaints mechanisms are also under consideration, and this must be effective with tangible consequences. Lastly, 
in terms of professionalization is the gender-based violence. The prevalence of gender-based violence in the taxi industry remains a source of serious concern. This discussion has been muted for too long, and it is time it is confronted head on. And active measures must be put in place to address this decisively. Such measures must include safety of women and children in the taxi environment with particular emphasis on the girl child. And these are the strategic issues that we are placing in the discourse, debate, and solutions as we move towards the taxi Lekhutla. Uh, and this Lekhutla is very important to basically fix and resolve some of the outstanding issues that uh, are important for this particular industry. And to sum them up, once towards the conclusion is to deal with the question of the regulation of the industry and to deal with uh, the issue of formalization, to deal with the issue of unity of the industry, to deal with the issue uh, of empowerment and subsidy of the industry. We've got many models, but we must at the end agree to one. And the chief amongst that is how we envisage the subsidy for the taxi industry, the one we seek to implement. We are putting money aside, reprioritizing our grant framework to ensure that we subsidize the taxi industry. That is what is going to come uh, at our doorstep. So you can, if you like it, this compact will come from a rigorous process of negotiations. So this is a process, pyramid process we are launching today. We are launching a process that goes to everywhere and for a robust discussion and the debate in terms of what must actually happen. And uh, when we finish by October, we've got the resolutions. And those resolutions, some of which require legislation, they will then be taken forward. But those in terms of economic model that must be implemented will be implemented with immediate effect. But over and above that, we cannot achieve all of these things. They will be, remain a pipe dream if ever there is no unity within the taxi industry. Many people are getting older and they are passing on. And as we pass on the baton, we've got to agree on these particular issues. And most of the time, I like to say this, I see Santaco being challenged. And NTA, they fight a lot, but they agree on one thing, money. There's no fight. Uh, they agree on about money. <laughs> Uguti, where money must go, they agree. We are resolving a number of issues as I move towards conclusion. That include the relief fund. Uh, the DG has been mandated to engage on that. We are going to resolve on those particular issues. The regulations were at 100% at the present moment. We are beginning to normalize and all of that. Long distance is hard hit and they're still at 70% and we address some of these particular issues. This part of the uh, uh, the project that we are at here in terms of recapitalization must be brought to its logical conclusion. And we'll bring it to its logical conclusion as we embark on the new path because we still have money. We've got cars we've got to still recapitalize. We must finalize that particular process and bring it to a conclusion. Last time I was here, building on what Blayton Ziman, the former minister, has started, and then uh, we could not find each other with the taxi industry. But all of those issues will bring to conclusion as we embark on the new path. As you listen to our story, we are not starting something new. 
we are finishing the road. All the past ministers have done their job, but they did not finish. But the vision was there. So we are not starting something new. Something new is Uber. In Chai Uber is new, 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 new on the block. And when I was in the police, I used to compare Uber and the lifestyle. Hey, I was attacked by Ntate Tai Bosch. Or Umbalula Kulizo Monotex, Imanji is talking what he's saying. And now they were fighting with the meter taxis and all of that. And we had to bring in the legislation. And salute to Joma Swangani and Minister Platin Zimande. Uh, they started that particular process. And to all of you who participated in that. And I agree with you. We are bringing that. The chair of the committee is here. We are bringing that to a logical conclusion. And that is the work that has been started by my four peers. And we are concluding that. And this recapitalization process will inform and be part of our reimagining the new approach going forward. But for now, it is important we must ease, we must ease and the leadership of the country must talk and we must converse. And there will be no holy cows. Don't keep yourself in the corner and not come to the debate because you lose the opportunity. There is a steering committee uh, that is coordinating all the discussions, and we are all invited to participate in this particular process. I therefore invite all taxi operators, taxi drivers, and all South Africans to join us in conversation as we put together a blueprint for a taxi industry that is an integral part of the formal economy and is truly empowered. Masi Chule Gengo, I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honourable Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to request that we give a more enthusiastic round of applause. I think, yes, it's been a long morning, but we can afford to give a little bit more than that. Thank you very much. Minister, if I may just take a moment to read a tweet that came in prior to your engagement this morning. It was from Ramatumbela who says, I really hope this taxi lukhotla is not just a forum to table wish lists. Nothing is achievable without a clear plan of action. Mr. Ramatumbela, I trust that you've been answered and that you have a little bit more faith in the process now that Minister Mbalula has taken to the podium. You You've heard for yourself, as has the entire republic, that the deadlines indeed are clear, that the topics have been outlined. We have umkombandlela for the future of the taxi industry. And we look forward to not only yourself, but the entire South Africa holding us to account on what we've had to say today. Ladies and gentlemen, to give us our closing remarks, please allow me now to call upon the Gauteng MEC for Roads and Transport, MEC Jacob Mamabolo. MEC? Welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Um, let me, without any waste of time, uh, acknowledge and appreciate and sincerely thank the political and executive leadership of the department Honorable Minister and Deputy Minister, uh, thank you very much for organizing what will remain a very historic, memorable, successful event, and for your leadership and guidance, and of course for choosing our province in which we pride ourselves as the home ground of smart mobility. And I must say, Minister, we are also ready, depending on where the alert levels will be, but if it will be at the time, when we could have a, an event um, that would be allowed outside alert levels, let me be it that our province is ready to host, uh, Minister. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to also take this opportunity to uh, acknowledge and appreciate the presence of the chairperson of the portfolio committee who's leading uh, in transport on oversight and thank you for um, being present in the event. 
And of course, the president of Salga who really made me felt at home um, in Gauteng. I hope you're feeling at home in, in our province. And uh, greet everybody at home uh, <laughs> uh, in Limpopo <laughs> when you go home. Uh, <laughs> Deputy Minister, let's, <laughs> let's greet everybody at home, DM. <clears throat> Let me acknowledge and greet the president of uh, Santago and thank him very much. When I was sworn in, you came to the event and uh, I'd like to thank you a lot. Allow me to acknowledge the deputy provincial chairperson of Santago in our province, uh, Mr. Tsebe. Thank you, thanks a lot, uh, leadership, for coming. And uh, all the different stakeholders that have uh, delivered excellent and very remarkable messages of support for time. I would have actually wished to go through each one of them, but Minister, my time for transport is actually gone with 30 minutes. At 12, I start health. So, <laughs> so for that, please forgive me. Um, I need to start with health. Uh, I've, over, I've actually taken time of health. Um, so forgive me for that. Let me also thank uh, our accounting officer, the director general, and I agree with uh, what the president said about his excellent leadership and for organizing a good event, leading all the team of, I mean, all the officials in the department that have worked very hard to put this event together. I also want to take this opportunity to thank our hosts uh, for a very good uh, facility, uh, the Texas Scraping Agency. Thank you very much. And uh, let me also just say to our media in Gauteng that um, you always never disappoint, and that's why we can proudly uh, bid to host minister. The media houses in Gauteng are very supportive in always communicating a positive message uh, coming from uh, transport. So I'd also like to thank them. Uh, with all those, uh, I hope uh, I have uh, acknowledged everybody, all protocols, sincere apologies. If I'm leaving anyone out, it's purely because health is calling. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Honorable Minister. <clears throat> Thank you so much, MEC. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, we have come towards the end of our proceedings today, but it is not goodbye. It is till we meet again because we look forward to hearing from you in the various webinars and the virtual platforms through which we will engage. We look forward to meeting with you again at the Mahotlas and the provinces. So this conversation definitely will continue. We look forward to hearing from you. So it's not goodbye. It is rather let the discussions begin. Thank you very much. Just before we go, may I please also invite you to go and uh, receive some lunch packs at the back. I'm going to ask that we please remember to observe social distancing, at least, when we do so. I'm going to ask that we go row by row, starting from the back, if you can just make your way out, collect your pack, and then you can come and be seated if you still have business here. But if not, then thank you so much for coming, and you can make your way home. Again, we do appreciate your time today. Drive safely. Thank you so much, Minister. Thanks, uh, Deputy Minister. Thank you very much, colleagues.